Hello everyone, it's Justin. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today I am filming a video discussing Rika Kihira of Japan and her amazing start to the season so far. Now, first I'd like to say thank you to all my viewers for your patience. I have been missing in action for the past month. And a lot of you follow me on social media, so you know that my father has been going through some health issues, so I devote more time to take care of him, which means I have less availability to film fully detailed, in-depth recaps on competitions. But instead, I think I'm going to film these short videos on specific topics in the figure skating world, because that way I get to stay relevant on some of the... Um, important things that are going on in the sport. Also, to make up for the fact that I have not been uploading lately, I do have quite a few videos planned for the near future, and a lot of them will be done with someone else. So it makes it easier on me, and I think it's more exciting for you all to see. And just to let everyone know that when I'm with someone else in a video, it's always because I invited them. There's been a few instances of people reaching out to me to do a video, and I've declined um, every single one of them and if I ask someone to join me it's because we have a genuine friendship or I really respect their opinions on figure skating and I always encourage everyone to be honest you know be yourself even if your views are different from mine you can dislike Ashley Wagner and Gabrielle Daleman you can say it on video you just have to be respectful about it so now that that's out of the way let's talk about Rika Kihira of Japan and why she has been so impressive. Impressive enough for me to make this video just on her. It's because she's 16 and she's been undefeated so far in her first season as a senior lady on an international Grand Prix circuit. I think I said that right. That was a mouthful. And how has she been able to win all of these competitions with some stiff, stiff competitors? It's because she has amazing technical content that's a lot greater than what some of the other ladies are doing. But it's not just that. She has great jumps without lacking any artistic expression or ability. Now, before I break down her season and the scores, I just wanted to get a few of my main thoughts on her out there in the beginning of this video. So the first point I'd like to make is that I don't think she's a fluke and I don't think she's going to be going through any growing pains in the future. I don't think her body will change too much, which means she won't need to tweak her technique because her technique on her jumps are really solid right now. The reason why I mentioned this is because we've experienced uh, in the past few seasons some veteran skaters reworking their uh, jump techniques so they have a few off seasons because they're not landing all of their jumps. A few examples that come to mind to me are Malasada of Japan and Carolina Costner of Italy. I don't think that's going to be the case for Rika, so she's in for the long run in my opinion. She has strong control over her blade, and you can tell because she has such deep edges, especially on her crossovers, which is really impressive. So that shows how much strength she has in her legs. Also she skates with movement throughout her entire body from head to toe. Uh, one way that her skating, like basic skating stands out to me is the use of her arms. Like they're not flappy all over the place. There's movement, but it's very purposeful, controlled, and it accentuates the music that she's skating to. It's very beautiful to see. She's very athletic and super strong without sacrificing any artistry really. Could she improve a little bit in that aspect? Sure. But she's also 16. I think improvement in that realm will just come with time. And I appreciate that she has some variances to her jumping style. Uh, and I'm mainly referring to her doing the triple jumps with arms above her head. Sometimes she does it with both arms above and sometimes it's just one. So I like that there's some differences there. Whereas if we compare her to some other ladies who do many jumps with arms above their heads. It's usually one style, which is one arm or bow. But Rika mixes it up and sometimes she does the jumps without doing an arm variation at all. So she's very dynamic for me to watch. So now let's go ahead and discuss her season. So obviously she won everything. 
So what events were they? NHK Trophy. And that's where she really made a splash in my eyes because it's not the fact that she won, it's the fact that she rallied after placing so far behind the other ladies in the short program. She was fifth after the short, but then came back and won the competition over teammate Satoko Miyahara, also from Japan. And her total competition score there was 224.31. So short program score was 69.59. And that's actually really impressive considering the fact that her triple axle was not clean there. It was in a free program, <laughs> which is why she scored 154.72. Uh, not too long after that, she competed at the International de France, and the, a clean triple axle was not to be seen. Uh, she popped it into a single in the short program, so it got zero points. That being said, her short program score there was 67.64. That's really high, and the reason why the score was so good, despite a zero on the axle, was because everything else was first rate. It was top notch. The jumps were still on. Performance was good. I think in that whole competition, it kind of seemed like she was focusing a little more than performing, but still really impressive to see her really skate a program. And the free program score was 138.28, but she pulled it out when she needed to the most. And let's see, she did attempt a triple axle in the free program France, but did not go as planned. Now, the Grand Prix final in Vancouver, which just happened, is where she impressed me so much. She was the clear winner, the clear favorite from the judges. The short program, she skated and so well that she scored a new world record which was 82.51. Now we have to remember that it's hard to compare world records now to previous seasons because the IJS now has a GOE scale of plus five to minus five as opposed to plus three to minus three in seasons past. But still, over 80 in any year of IJS is extremely, extremely impressive. That triple axle looked perfect what I love about it so much is that she flows so well in and there's a great running edge coming out of the jump as well. So fast that she's able to quickly snap back into her choreography, which by the way, she pays great attention to. Two amazing programs this season. Short is choreographed by David Wilson, along by Tom Dixon. I don't really see a difference in choreographic style because I think she just commits to um, a program so well and interprets music so beautifully that maybe it doesn't matter who her choreographer is or actually maybe it does but kudos to them on working on her packaging and at the grand prix final it was pretty much a showdown between her and alina zagidova reigning olympic champion from russia by the way i think rika is a superior skater to Alina, at least as of right now in the recent competitions. Please don't come for me. <laughs> and I felt compelled to make this video just because no other lady, at least in my time, of following figure skating closely has achieved this amount of success so early on. Evgenia Medvedeva of Russia was close, but in her Grand Prix season, she won a gold medal and then she won a silver medal at Ross Telecom Cup behind Evgenia, no, Elena Radionova, uh, who by the way also had an impressive debut season on the International Grand Prix. So yeah, Rika Kihira was the one <laughs> for the books, for the records. So three gold medals in a row. Wow, that's impressive. And I don't think she's done winning competitions. If anything, I'm glad that she's around to make each competition interesting to see if she or Rika will edge out for the title. Now let's go ahead and break down the scoring of the triple axle. The reason why she gets so much advantage over the other ladies technically is because of the difference in base value. So triple axle has a base value of 8, whereas a double axle has a base value of 3.3. 
That's, that's almost five points. And it's not just base value. Because she does the jump so well, she's often rewarded by the judges with amazing grade of execution marks. A lot of times threes, fours, and even a few times she gets a five or two from the judges. So here are some examples of her triple axel scores. When it's done well at the Grand Prix Final Short Program, the GOE was 2.51, and in the NHK Free Program, it was 3.09. So add that to the base value, 8 plus 3.09, 2.51. That element alone can score her in the double digits compared to a double axel. I mean, ugh, I can't, I, sorry. I'm just so speechless because she does it so effortlessly, but it's such a difficult jump to do. Now let's compare her score of a triple axel. Let's do a direct comparison at the Grand Prix Final. So in the short program, Rika received 10.51 points for the triple axel, and then Sofia um, of Russia scored a 4.53 for her double axel, and that's with the element receiving the 10% bonus for being at the end of her short program. So that shows you <laughs> what a difference a triple and double axle can make. Am I repeating myself too much? I think so, I apologize. If there is going to be a mistake from Rika, it will be on the axle because all the other triple jumps in her arsenal are executed really well and have such a high success rate. So. I don't think she'll be that far behind in the standings, and if she is, she has the most potential to catch up or surpass someone who has a significant lead over her in the short program. Mainly because if there's a mistake, it's only on the axle. And her program component marks are not bad for being so young and so new to the senior ranks. So let's now talk about that, the progression of her program component score. Sorry, I have my notes down here, so I'm just going to read them. So NHK um, was the first time we saw her this season on the Grand Prix. So her program component marks for the short program were was 32.19, so a lot of high sevens, low eights. Same with the free program, which got her 67.55. International de France, kind of similar numbers, but the Grand Prix Final is where we saw a jump. The short program had program component score of 35.15, so all high eights. And then the free program had 72.40, which were mostly low nines. So those are really high for Rika, but they're not the highest. So Toka Miyahara can score a higher program component score usually, and Alina Zagidiva sometimes scores a higher program component mark. Whether I agree with that or not is a different story, is a different video. But yeah, overall, Rika Kihira is amazing. If you ask me what I thought about her, is that she has the total package, especially for being her age. Does she have some growing to do? Sure, everyone does. The biggest one that stands out for me is that maybe she could give more facial expression and look more upwards to the audience rather than looking so focused. But if you look at the skating she actually does, edge quality, knee bend, spins, step sequence. She got a level four on her step sequence at the Grand Prix Final, which means her edges are deep and the changes are very sharp and clean. I, I'd i say she's right where she needs to be, especially if she wants to be relevant for the next few years and the Olympic Games. Anyways, I think that's all I have to say for today. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel and I'll see you all soon.